is up, everybody? Welcome to Comic Book Club. I'm Alex. I'm Justin. I'm Pete. And we are coming to you live from a couple places on the internet. We are live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, X slash Twitter, or Instagram. We are maybe coming to you later on Spotify <laughs> or, wow, okay, Dirty Lens over there, or Apple or Android or wherever you get your podcast. Just a regular reminder, Google Podcasts shutting down at the end of this month. So if you subscribe there, please stop that. Subscribe literally stop anywhere else. that. We're talking very specifically to our faithful friend and listener, Nat Towson, who apparently was one of the people listening to us on Google Podcasts. Come on, Nat, Nat. Get it together, buddy. Switch it up, yo. Get out the game. Don't be there when they close up shop. You might get locked inside. Oh, Spend no. the rest of your life inside Google Podcasts. Empty shell. Yeah. Free That's yourself. like a uh, classic, uh, what am I thinking of, like Basil Lee Frank oh. Weiler <laughs> type oh, novel. Man. I don't know. Nice. Look what Mr. Literati just my, over My brain here. had like a little spring pop out of it just then. The no, it physically a spring came out of your ear just now. <laughs> oh I don't know God. if you are aware. I'm bleeding we gotta, so hard. So We hard. got a clunky robot Alex on tonight, and that is trouble. I'm coming and at you from the West Coast right now. Just to be you clear. are. What's it like out there? What's the comic scene out in Los Angeles like right now, Justin? You're on the ground. You're reporting. Hit us up. It is thriving. I haven't talked to anybody. And <laughs> I have been um, trying to get out into the vigilante game while I'm out here because huh. there's a dearth of superheroes. How's Gabrus? Uh, very good. I, uh, friend of the show, John Gabrus, I'm recording this at his home. Wow. So shouts to that. That's nice of him. Yeah. That's like a podcasting hub. He has a couple of podcasts. So there's probably really great sound there. Let me say right now, he's podcasting two doors that way. Wow. <laughs> it's, a, it's the kingdom of podcasts, I think. Right oh, now. man. That's incredible. Maybe we can get a sneak peek at his podcast. Yeah. Can you run over podcast. and uh, say hi? Uh, you know? A crossover, a physical crossover. That would be. Fun. <laughs> Let's hope the Wi Fi doesn't cross over, if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Tell him to do take down the Halloween about. decorations. Uh, no, no, it's giving an ambiance. Don't worry about it. And I'll it's tell giving. you what, it is a veritable Halloween here because we have a bunch of treats for you in terms oh. of a ton of guests tonight. Look, so, the robot is working. <laughs> Guest equal treats. I Spring, I shoved it back at my ear. It also hurt, and there's also a lot of blood, but you got to do what that, you got to do. Alex, that's oil. I'm sorry to tell you. You're oh a robot. God. Oil can, oil can. Why don't we bring in our first guest here? He's the creator of Wannabes from Scout Comics. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, oh, it happened again. Mitchell Martinez. Hey, Mitchell, what's up? Welcome. Show. Hi, guys. I really appreciate you having me on here. Yeah, yeah no, no problem. problem. Thanks for coming on. Uh, not to blow up your spot and ask your location, but where are you reporting from right now? Where uh, are you looking? I'm reporting live from Lodi, California. All right. Oh, uh, nice. There we go. Two West go Coast heads right now. Justin, yes, please. Yeah. Go to Gabriel's uh, house. <laughs> so let's talk about this book, Wannabes, which is out now in graphic novel form. A very fun Ooh. book. Ooh, look at that physical yeah. copy there. So this is about a couple of friends who love superheroes and get superpowers, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. sounds like a fantasy we've all had. Yeah. Uh, is that, yeah. was that where the inspiration came from? Just the basic idea of as comic book readers, we always kind of dream of that, or was there something a little more there? So, well, that definitely did, and did play into it as well. And, you know, the idea for wannabes like really first came to me, like when I was in junior high, I think I was like about 12 at the time. And oh, wow. I was just, I was just like thinking to myself, like, okay, just for fun, if I was going to think of like, you know, my own superheroes what would that be like and well most of the ideas i like you know thought of back then were just flat out terrible i can admit it like because i mean like you know the majority of them were just like oh this character that already exists but a different color or this character <laughs> yeah. is a rip off of this thing and just but i mean like you know again it was just for fun it wasn't really taking it seriously but then out of nowhere and this is not and this is like not a pun but like there's like no other way i can like think think of way way to describe it like a bolt of lightning it just like mm. hit me as i was like walking home from school suddenly i like saw this uh, this image of zapster my superhero like you know like this cover that you're showing right here like you know shows his evolution as a kid who like you know likes comics to a wannabe vigilante to a wannabe superhero that image all the way on the right it just like popped into my head and i just like immediately went home and like drew and drew it out like as best i can because 
well, I think I am gifted in writing. I'm not really gifted with art. But anyway, mm -hmm. the idea just like stuck with me for like so long. And when I went, when I got into college at, in, at California State in Sacramento, I found this company in Sacramento called Scattered Comics, which represented a lot of freelance artists. And it was through them that I was able to find my artist, Samir Samau. And fortunately, I was able to work with him to get enough material put together to where I could start pitching it to some publishers. And thankfully, one of them actually said yes and helped me create the book into what it is now. Awesome. Now, what what drew you to Samir's art? Because I think it really it totally goes so well with the with, with the story, Agreed. like very youthful. It almost feels like it has a little bit of that 90s energy, yeah. uh, 90s early aughts energy. Like, was that sort of your intention from the jump? Well, I am definitely a big fan of like, you know, comic styles from uh, from the 90s. So like I do like that comparison. And and yeah, uh, like when I just like looked at the different options that like were available, Samir's art really did stick out to me in like a few ways. And it actually does help that. <clears throat> well, I didn't find this out until later, but he had actually done some work for Scout Comics. Oh, cool. He had actually he put together th or this book that's called um you did say that there's no language barriers on the show, right? That's correct. Yeah, get loose. All right. He made it, this mini series for them that's literally called Shit Show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sounds Which right. is also a superhero title, but a lot more bleak and adult. I'll just leave it at that. Sounds <laughs> good. <hard. read> <laughs> uh, what about the powers of the hero? So you mentioned the main hero here is called Zapster. Obviously, he's got, oh my gosh, I just took you off instead of that. Sorry about that. Wow. Um, Alex bouncing. <laughs> get out of here the uh, obviously he has like slightly electricity based powers among other things there's some stuff mm -hmm. to develop over the course of the story why that of all the powers you could choose why was that the one to go with for some reason the idea of just like electric powers just like really sticks with me i don't like really know like what it is like you know just like the idea of like you know just like being able to just like shock anybody and just like the different powers that like you know can, you can associate with electricity like you know super speed or like shooting through the air and stuff like that it just seemed like kind of like a versatile you know, like you know power aspect in my opinion is cool. that the power if you could have a power that you would pick Ooh. oh yeah Get into it alex you know yeah, i mean really drill it in I guess I could like probably see myself going that way. Although, like anytime somebody asks me if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Yeah, My default is answer, sir, is like usually telekinesis, and just like because oh. you can like fight and fly with that. But I definitely mm. wouldn't mind having Zapster's powers too. Well, we are giving out one superpower tonight to one of the guests, <laughs> yes. so I really hope I hope you're really willing to stand by that. <laughs> Uh, now, listen, Mitchell, I don't want to put you on the spot too much here, but we'd be remiss not to ask about this. There's obviously been, a, for anybody who doesn't know, a kind of a flap online about Scout Comics and their treatment of certain artists and creators, payment issues, etc. I will say, I've talked to a lot of different creators without blowing anybody's spot up. Some people have said, hey, I had a really good experience. Some people are like, eh, I had a mixed experience. And obviously, a lot of people are posting online about a bad experience. I'm not asking you to necessarily blow up the spot of your publisher, but I'm curious to hear what your experience with them has been. If My experience with them has been nothing but positive, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like, from the moment I started work working with them... <clears throat> Like my editor Andrea Molinari, who who is also, who is also a creator for for Scout as well, he makes this <clears throat> this title called The Shepherd. Yeah, I mean, like you know, guys like him and Richard Rivera at the at the company, they've just been like nothing but supportive and really really helpful. Like they seriously helped me refine my book into what it is and what it is today. Because I mean, like the end product is still like, you know, my original vision, but it, it, it's a lot more focused. Like my original ideas were like a lot were like too wordy for one thing. I recall this like one instance where Andrea pointed out to me that like my original script had like so much text that like when he showed me what it looked like on the page, it just like completely covered any and all of the arts that was on there. So he really taught me how to properly trim the script and like really just, you know, get to the point. Uh, I, I, I want to follow up with like, how hard is that? You know, you write everything out because you want to kind of like get your idea out there and then you kind of hand it over to somebody and then they butcher it. They're like, this is too much. Look at all these words. What are you doing? Like, how do you kind of then decide what goes, what stays, 
Like, do you, I mean, it, it's got to be tough to uh, kind of make those cuts to your own material. I hope to someday be Pete's editor and really develop <laughs> that antagonistic relationship that you literally just laid out. Sorry, Mitchell. My words are gold. How dare you? <laughs> Well, I mean, at first it was, it was like a bit hard to hear. But again, when I saw like how it would actually look on the page, it just like really made me realize that like, you know, some trimming had to be done. Plus, so, I, ha plus I have like, you know, come across some comics that, uh, that like definitely do go too far in like the word department. Like I was actually just like recently re reading you know, like some old comics from, from the 90s. And I was like, you know, I, I, re I remember really liking these storylines and I do still enjoy them and everything. But some of them just have like so much text on every page that for a while just like makes my eyes glaze over <laughs> so I'm well, just... let me let me mention one book that actually had a ton of words in it and uh, it was no problem for anybody it was the original comic book and was called the bible yeah yeah great job uh, I... anyways uh what i'm trying to drill into <laughs> Look, here what Pete i'm trying to edit it alex you know <laughs> I, I, what i'm trying to figure out is you know a lot of people ask us like oh i want to write a comic book how do i start and stuff like that so what i'm trying to uh, kind of get to a little bit so it helps you to picture the page and to think like okay what can i fit in here really helped you with your creative process is what you're saying i i suppose that you could like definitely look at it like that one one way that uh, one bit of advice that andrea gave me was how can you say what you want to say but in the most efficient way possible okay. cool mm. well, and he also like you know, told me to like you know, to look for a couple of like different examples and say in like other comics like one example that he did tell me to take a look at was sin city by frank miller and just like you know, just like see and seeing and how they convey di dialogue and narration in, in that because it's always like you know very clear to the point but also very dynamic and striking at the same time cool mm, cool nice. Fun. thanks for well sharing. now that you've tackled this comic book and you feel like you've learned a lot are you working on more are you moving forward or are you like I did the idea that I planned when I was a kid. I'm good to it's go. It's over. On to my next childhood dream, becoming a pitcher for the Houston Astros. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am, am definitely still proceeding ahead. In fact, currently, the next issue for Wannabes is is currently being colored at the moment. Oh, nice. Because, <clears throat> nice. like, like, these... Uh, the trade here collects issues one through four, but in one book. Although... Issue issue one was like only published by itself. Issues two through four are only available in the graphic novel. Oh, yeah, nice. Well, cool. Although yeah, although I have to say that there is definitely like a, like enough variant covers for like issue oh, two, nice. one, one to go around. So huh, cool. That is got a bag. interesting. Yeah, interesting bag publishing. Board, plan. Baby. I like that. Yeah, but yeah, issue five is the next one that that's being put together, and I currently have my colorist working on that. I'm hoping to have it out some sometime within like the next few months. You know, just fingers crossed. Great. And yeah, I definitely definitely want to see the series continue. Like I've done the first story arc, and now on to the next one. And the next ones will like definitely be like more one shot stories. I mean, they will like you know still tell a continuous narrative, but like you know each one will be like its own complete issue. Gotcha. Cool, that's awesome. Uh, well, awesome, Mitchell. Where can people check this out on the Scout website? I assume is it available anywhere else or anywhere else you want to send them? Yes, everything is available on scoutcomics.com. That includes the single issues, the digital copy, the trade, and also official wannabes merchandise as well, such as, as t shirts, oh, nice. hats. Yeah, the merch. We also have like mugs and pint glasses and like, you know, just like th things like that. <clears throat> And the book is definitely available in in stores. Like, for example, if you're in the Sacramento area, Empire's Comics Vault is one, is one of the shops that, that, that like still has some copies. Nice. Shouts to the <laughs> local comic shop. Say, and we and and I've also been told by Scout that sometime later this year that there will also be a new push for a lot of their titles, including mine, to hopefully get them into other distributors, such as like you know regular bookstores and maybe places like Amazon and such. So, just cool. keep your eyes peeled. Awesome, awesome, Mitchell! Congratulations on everything. Yeah. Thank you so much for yeah. coming on, and uh, good luck. Looking forward to the next issue. Yeah, congrats. Thank you. Go get them. All right. There we go. Once again, that was Mitchell Martinez. The book is called Wannabes, Wannabes. and it is out now from Scout Comics. Yeah, it's a blast. Why don't we bring in our second guest? Uh, oh, were you going to say something, Pete? Or 
did I edit you? Well, oh, oh ooh, are we revenge fighting? edit. Are we fighting already? We're all, we're all sort of each other's editor here a lot of times. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Especially when I'm like, I have a thing to say now. And I start, and I start <laughs> That's talking. That's how editors work, right? Talking. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Interrupt editors, you. they see, uh, like a comic book editor, they'll be like, oh, that dialogue's good, but I have a funnier piece of dialogue. <laughs> Speaking of funnier, we should bring on a new guest. We yeah. should. He is the, the co-founder, CEO, and publisher of Rocket Shit Entertainment, among many, many other things. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Akel. Tom, hey, hello. How are you? Welcome. Uh, excited to see you again. I've known you for a while. We had you on our stage show Ooh. years ago, right? If I remember correctly. Oh, I think. Okay. No, never. Not been. him. This is another guy. Different, different guy. Yeah. And wow. 15 years I've known you. Oh my gosh. Uh, yes. Well, Tom, thank you so much for coming on. You have so many exciting irons in the fire, as always. Couple that I'll tee up that are happening right now. Uh, let's let's uh, bring up a big one first. You through Rocket Ship are working with Legendary on a little mm -hmm. graphic novel called Dune Part Two. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah. Uh, talk to me about how that works. What, how does the partnership work and why put this on Kickstarter? Oh, gosh. Uh, so, I mean, at this point, every major publisher is on Kickstarter, right? So I'm sure you guys yeah. can see uh, it's Boom, Skybound, Top Cow, IDW, Dynamite, all the Marvel DC tabletop games. Um, so I, it's sort of Kickstarter has become, I think, just in general, like a, a really important piece of, of the industry ecosystem. And it, there's a lot of a lot of reasons for it. Margins have to do a lot with it. Um, you know, they're basically pre-order campaigns. That's how we treat these. Uh, so the legendary partnership between us and legendary is really, they'll either have a project they plan on doing or we'll pitch something to them that we think would be cool. Um, and we just kind of collaborate on what it's going to look like in its final form. And then things like on the Dune Kickstarter, you'll see there's the Bill Sikiewicz cover because it's Dune. So there has to be a Bill Sikiewicz cover. <laughs> Quran Grant cover because Quran was at my birthday party in January and we just started talking and it's like, why don't we do something? So now there's a Quran Grant cover. Uh, so nice. sometimes it's going to come in through different doors. And then when it comes to a lot of the ancillary products, uh, you know, we're we're privy to style guides and everything that's coming out before all these movies. So we work on Dune and Pacific Rim and all the Monsterverse stuff and Trick or Treat and all these other legendary projects. And we'll that's just, awesome. like, for this one, I really wanted to do a, a Sandworm plushie. So, <laughs> as you do we're making a sandworm plushie and you can smart for 39 dollars in the kickstarter as an add-on uh, let me ask you how long is that plushie <laughs> i think the link matters <laughs> smaller than a popcorn bucket i think um oh boy <laughs> yeah like, yeah <laughs> and you can still put butter in it right that's not oh, a come it comes on, full of it's butter. weird this well, you weird. Your plushie is your business alex <laughs> yeah. Wow, you guys have known each other for a while. Yeah, we don't even judge anybody, you know. We sell body pills with some of our campaigns, so you know the plushies at least. Yeah, uh, it's really interesting to hear you say that it's part, sort of part and parcel with the promotional campaign. I mean, I think we've talked about that a lot here on the show. Why these bigger companies go to Kickstarter? Um, how do you talk to Kickstarter about that? How do they feel about it? Because I think. To be oh, honest, yeah. our initial reaction was like, this is supposed to be homegrown things. How dare these companies do this? But to your point, it is well, kind it, of just it, the thing that happens now. It was like that. And we were at MTV. I remember that Archie campaign that just got blown up. And Archie yeah. got, I mean, they were raked over the coal streets in Kickstarter. And now it's just everyone's doing it. It just <laughs> kind of, I think it evolved and it took a few projects from bigger names to happen. And, you know, when something like, you know, Keanu Reeves is on Kickstarter, wants something like uh, Critical Role, even though that's a kind of a homegrown indie thing, but it's an Amazon show, <laughs> you know, yeah. right immediately afterwards and is raising that kind of money. And now Brandon Sanderson last year did like a $40 million campaign for four books he just, you know, lazily wrote during the pandemic. Um, <laughs> you know, things like that happen and it just opens the doors for everybody. So I think the, the attitude changed and, and a lot of when we started doing this, even in the early days with Legendary, Rocket Ship is already using Kickstarter as part of our core business model for publishing. Um, and that has to do with the way web comics works, not necessarily the way the rest of the industry works. Uh, but, um, you know, we had to answer a lot of those questions initially with, with Legendary and then even on the Stanley's back channel book that, um, that I co-wrote with Stan, uh, with POW and kind of positioning it as, look, this is a crowdfunding campaign. 
because, uh, and this is the truth, is a lot of what we do in these campaigns, we can't deliver those experiences to the fans any other way. So some of the stuff we make is very limited in quantity. There's no real way to distribute signed autograph book plates into stores or through an Amazon pre-order, um, you know, and then there's, there's like, no way to do enough of the deluxe slip cases at retail for some of these for some of these projects. Some of them there are right. Like obviously, Dune's a massive property and it's a big hit, and the movie's just crushing it. But not it everything feels, can make it into the stores the same way. It really feels like I, hearing it as like it's like a pre-order uh, is really smart, and it it sort of makes me think of how Substack is becoming such a thing, connecting right with creators and it's almost gathering fans. Uh, so how do how do you sort of use that? relationship uh for obviously the the book plates you were just saying is part of it yeah i mean you can be drawn into the comic right we can't do that ahead of time any other way you know it's yeah. very expensive tier and that varies depending on the project but i think you know 95 percent of the books we work on you can there's like an appear in the comic or a commission from the artist things you just can't do any other way and you know I'll, I'll, so to, to kind of answer your question not related to the legendary content but um the rock rocket ship is a publisher when we started the company a lot of one of the reasons I should say we went to Kickstarter first and crowdfunding first is we wanted to kind of recreate that one-to-one -one relationship that creators have with the fans online. So whether they're on Tapas or Webtoons or Manta or social media or Instagram comics or any of the comics or whatever it is, they get to see this comic in real time. They have access to the creator. They see their social media. So they're used to just dealing with them directly and not having to like pre-order on Amazon or set a date in the store or try and then get stores to be educated on web comics. So it was really difficult to bridge that in any other way other than going direct to them. So we just sort of same thing, recreated the experience or as much of the experience that they have enjoying their content online in the campaigns and just make them a part of the process. And you know, it doesn't always happen, but we definitely track the comments and it may not affect, and we get lots of feedback and it may not affect the first volume of something, but it can definitely affect how we approach the next project or the next volume, or even add, we definitely add and change content in campaigns and add-ons. Like, well, I don't want to say all the time, but it happens frequently enough. That oh, that's right. cool. That's you get cool. to react sort of yeah. in real time, and that's awesome. Well, yeah. let me ask you a further question then, because and I'll bring up the other one that you have running right now is this uh, book called Gun Punch, which has been successfully funded. So that's awesome. Congrats. But when you have things like dune part two on kickstarter and brandon sanderson and all these big properties do you find it's harder to have something like a gun punch that's a little bit more of a homegrown thing break through the noise uh that's a good question you know if you asked me that two years ago i'd say no uh and i still am of the opinion you know it's a sort of an all boats rise um environment but it's been more crowded lately and that's also sort of been impacted by the economy to some extent mm -hmm. like there's less sort of this i mean i know the economy is strong and inflation is flattening but um there's still less discretionary spending happening and kickstarter had a real boom during the pandemic that has kind of leveled off a little bit or actually not just kickstarter but crowdfunding as, a, as, a, as an industry uh so getting new properties out there that have no existing fan base um is a little bit more challenging. I mean, Gun Punch is successfully funded. We're very happy with that. Uh, and, you know, this is only sort of a first window for us as far as what distribution how distribution goes for Rocket Ship because books will be available through Lunar. Books will be available for Simon and Schuster globally in English. And we have a foreign rights agency who gets books placed with other foreign rights publishers. Um, so it's only one piece of the process. But yeah, it's it's the very recently, really, like in the last month, I was like. Wow, there's a lot of projects on Kickstarter that I like. I, I never really sort of would have felt that way. Even, I mean, honestly, you asked me this last fall, I would have probably had a different answer. But like right now, like in this moment, like Odie's got a really great Kickstarter going with Cult of the Land. Boone's got mm -hmm. Farscape going. Um, I, I think Skybound has something going. I know Top Cow's got another Darkness campaign either running or about to run. Um, you know, there, and there's just a lot of, there's, uh, a couple other like bigger creators and some other big IP all sort of running at once. But you know, that's the flip side of that is, and the, and Boone caught a lot of flack for that on the Keanu campaign for Berserker, uh, or Berserk, sorry. No, I get too confused. But um, <laughs> my, my opinion on that is all of those people now are forcefully opted in to updates and other mm -hmm. letters. And in those, you'll see, you may also like. So for me, the more Keanu Reeves that come to the platform, the more chance that Gun Punch is going to be exposed to them whenever Boone does an update 
because they don't control all those modules. Kickstarter does, and most of those are dynamic, or there's a more of a newsletter that'll go out to more people. So it just sort of increases the pool of people purchasing here. You guys can't hear that baby crying outside, right? We can, but that's yeah, all right. A little. I yeah, we window. always that's have a, a future baby fan. crying. It's yeah. it's fine. Fine. I can shut the window. All that on. baby just got yeah. gun punched. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> wanna, wanna, sorry, here, I'm gonna, you're going to realize I'm wearing my pajamas right now. But here. Wow, busted. <laughs> uh, that's great. It's better than no pants, which is usually how I yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, I'm not wearing pants. None of us. Yeah, we have a no pants policy on this podcast, so thank yeah. you. We do. No pants, no shoes. Service. We always say. Service. Uh, talk uh, more creatively. Let's talk about Gun Punch because it's such a fun sounding and looking book. What is, what's the idea here? What's the pitch? So, uh, you know, it's by Fernando Pinto. He wrote and drew it. I worked with Fernando on a series um, when I was head of content at Web2 uh, called Eat Fighter. Uh, we kept in touch, which is also very, very funny uh, by Fred Van Lenti and uh, Krista Skillman. Oh, yeah. Fernando Illustrated. Um, and the, the the sort of elevator pitch is, um, you know, it, it, what if, you know, Green Lan someone was selected like a Green Lantern and uh, the ring was kind of an asshole and <laughs> if you stop doing what you're supposed to do and fight, fight using it. Um, and he's fighting off uh, an alien invasion of Earth using it. So he's basically forced into the situation where uh, he's got this symbiotic alien technology built into him uh kind of you know un unwittingly through um uh, i know this is not a pg podcast but just uh, a night of debauchery ended him mm -hmm. in this situation and now nice. he's forced to you know be your savior and it's wow. really, really funny fernando's comedic beats are, are spot on like all his callbacks are great like, uh, he's got a real knack for this um so i, I really i mean i read the first issue he pitched it to us um I laughed out loud several times just sitting in my machine. Uh, nice. I was like immediate, immediately immediately said, "Oh yeah, we do have to do this." And and that category, like this action comedy, like sits alongside a lot of other books we publish, so we kind of have a natural blend. That's awesome. You mentioned webtoon, and something we've talked about is there. It feels like the comic industry is split. There's webtoon on one side, and sort of the traditional mainstream comics on the other side and i feel like you sort of operate in both like why is that split still a thing um well uh, without getting too much of my background i was the first executive of webtoon to bring webtoon from korea to the united states um and in my first few years there a big piece of my task was to bring in you know quote unquote western creators right so uh, I, for a while there it was really the uh, so a murderer's row of talent who we were publishing um, on the platform yeah. as far as you know marvel dc image of course uh, uh creators uh that kind of went away when i left um mm -hmm. and they just basically stopped doing it and leaned more into uh what was really working and popping on the platform which was which was ya romance skewing ya which was also by design i mean like when i first came to the company uh, my supervisor asked, you know, what he wanted to, was like, what's the most, what's the top selling categories in the United States? And, you know, went over superheroes and many said, that's what we should do. I said, I don't know. <laughs> we're going to focus, <laughs> we're going to focus on romance and female creators and, and, and female driven content because there's a gaping hole for that. Um, right. and that went really well. So after I was gone, I was, I mean, it just need more in that direction and more in just bringing translated titles over. So I think what you see now is a lot a lot of the content from korea for the last few years has just been brought to the english language platform um so you know that's kind of like the same similar to the division between manga and western comics right i mean right. They're, they're you know there's some crossover but they each live in their own little space um and one team kind of lives in its own space uh so the the, the larger crossover that's happening now the webtoon audience also because it's an app because it's free Skews young. Um, mm. the format doesn't necessarily appeal to older readers. Uh, you know, we just, even though technically the, kind of the balloons are a little larger on your phone than they would be in print, like we're always reformatting, reverse formatting those, you'll, you know, people just don't want to do it sometimes. It's very, very difficult to get somebody to just open their phone and read it. It's more difficult than it is sometimes to get people to pick up a book and read it. Um, so you wind up with this, you know, teenage audience. And they like certain kinds of content the same way they like certain kinds of TV shows and movies, the same way we did when we were younger. Um, 
So it just kind of leads in that direction where the rest of the print industry leads much older outside of the, you know, scholastics and some of the things right. that the house is doing and, and a lot of what Rocket Ship does, which is we, we really do live more in a YA space um, probably than, than most other companies do. Or like if you look at the blue box label, right? That's, that's more of that audience. Uh, well, talk about just to get back to Rocket Ship and all the stuff you're doing. We mentioned a couple of the projects there. You dropped a couple as well. What else should people be checking out? What do you want to plug? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Here we go. <laughs> um, uh, is it next month? Very, very soon, we have. Uh, uh, Kevin McGuire book hitting uh, Kickstarter called Tanga that he wrote and illustrated. It was originally published by DC in an anthology that I, I'm completely forgetting the name of. It's never been collected. It was kind of lost a little bit in that anthology and has never seen the light of day. And it's very, very funny. It's um, imagine like a, it's very easy to imagine this. It's very, uh, maybe a little less rated R than Lobo, but a female Lobo-esque character traversing the universe and fighting alien kaiju on other planets in that wahaha mm. style of humor. Yeah. Um, so the it's great. Signature wahaha. Yeah. It's very funny. Um, sits right alongside Gun Punch, which I would work Gun Punch Tanga. Yeah. So I love cool. the comedy focus. Yeah. I mean, and we have Outrage. We still have another volume of Outrage. I think later this year on Kickstarter. Uh, don't tell me the timing, but that's by Faye Benicias and Riley Brown. And you know it's that same style of Deadpool humor that they're, they're known for, especially you know I mean, if you read any of Fabian stuff when he is on oh, yeah. comedy, he's very on. Uh, so hmm. we, have, we have several books like that. I'm look, I'm keep looking here because I have a show. <laughs> that's, that's, I know if you want to grab care show us, feel free. You know, you're... I have somebody holding cue cards up here. Don't forget. Yeah, yeah. the baby's <laughs> holding the cue cards. <laughs> <laughs> that's not my. I just kid. <laughs> um, <laughs> my baby. Yeah. Uh, what else? Well, so we always have Let's Play in Market, which that's our biggest title that had something like over 7 million followers across Webtoon in several languages. Uh, we have volume four at the printer now, volume five will be on Kickstarter this summer. There's an Omnibus later this year. Next year, there's an anime series on a major streaming platform. It's in production right now with OLM, who's the studio with Pokemon. And Tommy can communicate. Um, wow. So let's I'll always plug Let's Play in case any viewers are not familiar with Let's Play. It's Eisner nominated. It's Ringo Award winning. Um, like massive critical and commercial hit. Uh, really very very modern um, and and not really YA. It's he's older than that. So um, I mean I can get to the pitch of the comic depending on how long we have. But I'll make sure I mention other things. So I'm working on <laughs> leaving anybody out. Uh, what else? Oh, we have back channel. Which I'm pointing there because it's up there somewhere. Uh, that comes out April 2nd uh, in retail. We just fulfilled the Kickstarter for that from a while ago. It was a little bit over. Um, I co wrote that with Stan Lee um, a couple of years before we passed. Uh, and it's bullshit by Andy Tong, who's just awesome. He's done um, Spider Man UK for a really, really long time and Zodiac Legacy with Stan and with Kyle before. Uh, he's he's full time at Riot Games right now, so he's a little bit out of the comic scene for the moment. But, um, did such a great job on that book. Um, it took us quite a while to reformat it because it was originally a webtoon series with animation and sound effects. So oh. re reverse engineering that. The, the, the yes, yeah. comic books don't usually have sound effects. I, I don't know if you know that, Tom. Yeah, I know. It's hard, it's hard especially when you... Uh, sometimes it's not a big deal, but when you use, when you use it for an, as an actual storytelling point in the book, <laughs> you really mm -hmm. have to figure out how to create that. Um, mm. As, you know, I, I used it as like a mnemonic device in, in the book and had to like, struggle honestly to figure out like, okay, that's not going to exist now. Um, <laughs> we have to have some sort of visual representation of that thing. Um, what else do we have that's coming up that I can plug? Uh, we have the first, oh, uh, just got back from the Gamma conference a week ago. Yeah. And uh, where we were demoing, this is the first ever um, Stanley tabletop game. It's our wow. first game. Wow. Um, I'm not going to open the box where the pieces are going to fall out everywhere. This is a full <laughs> prototype. Uh, and uh, I worked on this with uh, Ryan Benjamin, who's a Kaiser nominated artist, does a lot of DC image stuff. He did the original Ron Union, a ton of Wildstorm work, and oh, wow. all the way, like, lots of Batman and Nightwing. 
Uh, we did 200 original characters for that game. It's like it's crazy how much stuff is in that box. That comes up as all. We're just about all uh, so wait, I, I'm sorry. Is that a board game? Is it a role playing game? Tabletop. It's tile based. So okay. um, if you're a game, like if you're a gamer, the sort of light pitch is uh, like tile placement like Carcassonne, resource management like a tan. But I'm going to date myself a little bit. But like character mechanics like Talisman Second Edition from Games Workshop from the 80s. No, anyone? No. Yep, sorry. <laughs> Great game. One of my favorites. Uh, is, that's basically tabletop. That's like tabletop D and D, but like wow. with a super cool theme, right? So it's a lot of characters placing tiles. You have nexus tiles, placing tiles every turn, generating you're generating power. So your power meter by getting twenty powers, how you win the game? You have to play some characters, completing plots, completing events. Um, there's action cards, and there's combat mechanics. And you drop characters into the game by spending resources that you generate in a few different ways, uh, and then. On your power meter, once you get to 15 power, each of the powers is themed with a descriptor. Uh, and at 15 power, you get great power. And with great power, you get a great responsibility token that you must then spend at the end of your turn to help your fellow team, your help fellow players. Oh, so it's kind of got this I wish I had that in my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, so I can know what I'm doing more, you yes. know? The catch up mechanic for life would be awesome. Would be yeah, awesome. exactly. Oh no, I got another responsibility. <laughs> too powerful. I think, I think you have two of them that are like five and seven, right, Justin? Ah, uh, yes, but they're on a whole different coast. So my <laughs> responsibility hate... tokens are. I left them in New York. Uh, Tom, that is a lot of stuff. That is a lot yeah. of stuff you're doing. Awesome. That's a lot of awesome stuff. Um, I should probably have those other people I mentioned on your show. They're more interesting. <laughs> no, no, no. This is great. Um, love seeing you. Love talking about this stuff. This is all awesome. Good luck with the Kickstarters. Very excited about the tabletop game. I can't wait to finally learn how to have responsibility in my own life. Yeah. Uh, but there it's you go. It's other people. That's it. Is that something? <laughs> and exactly. which uncle do it, has to die in my life to <laughs> play the game? Let me know. Yeah. I'll, I've got a bunch. Start play by killing an uncle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. boy. Oh, boy. You do, have, uh, you do get a DNPC in the game at one point. Ooh. Yeah, of course. Awesome. I yeah. love it. Tom, so great seeing you. Thank you so much for coming on. Always yeah, a pleasure. on everything. Awesome. Thanks, guys. See All you, right. Tom. All right, there we go. Tons of stuff to check out oh, as man. Tom just so plugged. But Rocket Ship Entertainment, they've got all the stuff over there. You can check out Gut Punch is on Kickstarter now. Yeah. Also, Dude Part 2, the graphic novel on Kickstarter now as well. Uh, Back Channel is in stores uh, April 2nd, I believe. What were you going to say, Pete? I just wanted to explain a little bit. I mean, what's nice about Gun Punch is it's more than a regular punch because you're getting punched with a gun. You know what I mean? <laughs> wow. It's yeah, just yeah, brilliant. Spoke to the you. layers really spoke to, to you, this uh, project is just <laughs> unbelievable. But the layers, you mean the gun and the punch, those two right. layers. Two well, layers. I think there's a little bit more than two, you know, but for you, I can see you You only see things. Yeah, in, there's, yeah, there's the gun, there's the punch, and there's the, ooh, I just got punched. That's three. Yeah, that's right. Two. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, listen, let's go down to another layer with our final guest of the evening. He is the creator of one of our favorite books that are currently yes. running, at least for two of us, and one of the most terrifying books for yeah, one of us. I think currently Pete might running. be too scared to be here for this interview. So yeah, that's right. Pete, clear. do you want to log off for this? Are you, uh, are you don't okay? give me that opportunity, man. I'll take it. <laughs> All right, let's bring him back. I'm scared. He is, he is the creator of Beneath the Trees, where nobody oh! sees from IDW. Ladies and gentlemen, Patrick Horvath. Patrick, welcome to the show. Hello. Hey, thanks for having me on, guys. Yeah, thank Great you so much for you. coming on. And I know we gave that little intro there, but legitimately, Justin and I are like, we love this book. The okay, we are. Right, right, enough this of this. Great. I got to talk to time, Patrick. I got to talk like... to Patrick. All right. Listen. <laughs> Wait, Patrick. can you set up what the book is first? Talk to me. Oh, yeah. my God. All right, fine. Set up the book. Fine. Never fine. meet okay. your for, heroes, Pete says. Yeah. For anybody yeah. who hasn't read it, the uh, there are three issues out. The fourth issue comes out tomorrow from IDW. And I think the soft pitch, the way we've been talking about it, we've been reviewing the book, and I think you've been using this as well a little bit, is kind of, it's Richard's, the uh, Richard Scary, the wide world busy of world. Richard, busy, busy world, world of Richard Scary, meets Dexter is kind yeah. of what's going on there. Um, I love this book. This is absolutely one of my favorite books that have been published right now. But Pete, now okay. that we have the concept out of the way for whatever our <clears throat> listeners, take it away. 
uh, first off, Patrick, I was really hoping when we would meet you, you know, it would be such a welcoming, nice vibe. It looks like you're straight <laughs> from murdering somebody and then just put yeah. a curtain there because there's dead bodies all behind you. All yeah. behind me, guys. Yeah, oh, my God. <laughs> about Could you please tone down the scariness? I'm trying to like you. Um, I'm worried about this book, man. Not only are you showing kids like adorable ways to murder people, you're also showing them how to get away with it. What are you doing, man? This is scary as shit. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say necessarily that anybody's gotten away with anything yet. But That's anything. exactly right. There's a lesson. You never know. I've also, <laughs> I've, I've also been it trying be to emphasize to speak. Pete, whenever we review this book, I've been trying to emphasize to them, these are animals. All they're getting away with is murdering ducks and bears and other creatures <laughs> yes. like that. It's, it's not a big yeah. deal. Mother nature. Exactly. Yeah. Nature. Uh, yeah, so, mother nature to murder someone, cut them up and put them in a little paint can so nobody can catch uh, you for murdering people. I can't wait to tell you where garbage plates come from, Pete. Uh, come on, don't, <laughs> don't mess with that. That's a national treasure. Uh, so, Patrick, I do want to take a step back, though, and talk about the concept of the book and where it came from. Obviously, we talked about the pitch just before, but how how did these ideas come together? Was it just like, take something cute, make it horrifying? There's more to the book. So I imagine beyond what that initial germ of a picture was, it grew in certain directions from there. Yeah, it, uh, I mean, it, just take, you know, before I get going, like, thank you very much for the kind words. I really appreciate it. Um, this book is such a weird book that I didn't realize I'd be able to find a home for it, much less get an audience for it. So uh, this is v very welcome. I appreciate it, guys. Um, but the, uh, I mean, I came up with the idea for this, like, maybe, uh, it's like seven years ago is, I think, the timeline for it. And mm. I would just used to, I mean, when I had time, I would draw like every morning and the first thing in the morning I would draw just a picture, whatever, have my cup of coffee. And it didn't have an idea of what I was doing when I would start. And I would just kind of like, and then a picture would show up, you know, after you start kind of putting lines together, you're like, oh, this would be kind of funny if it was this, if it was that, whatever. One of those ended up being like this bear with like an ax on their shoulder wearing like coveralls or something. Um, and it was a bloody ax and, th and that was it. And usually a lot of these drawings would tend to be, they've kind of felt like they were sort of these like little snapshots of a larger story or something. It's just the way I, I didn't necessarily know what they would be. It's just the way my brain works, you know? Um, and they're, they're kind of fun sometimes. And they kind of like, when you're looking at them, you kind of start thinking of a story. Uh, anyway, so well, that one, it was sort of, uh, it was almost immediately like, well, it'd be kind of funny if you had like a serial killer bear that was kind of in like a Richard Scary <laughs> town. Yeah. I was like, that'd be funny. Um, it would be <laughs> funny if they were just thriving and nobody knew about it. And it was ever by all appearances, like it just seemed like everything was normal. Uh, and so that was the germ. And then I pretty much, and then I sort of like at some point came up with the idea that the, the hook would be that the, it's not that they're just the killer. The hook would be that there's like another killer in town and then yeah. it's going to take a killer to catch a killer. And that was sort of the main, I was like, uh, okay, cool, cool. So then I threw together basically a three act pitch um, and a couple paragraphs and just had it sitting in a document with a book, like maybe several others. So when I came to IDW, um, they, I gave them all those pitches and that was the immediate like response was like that we like this one. Yeah. Uh, please send us everything you got on that one and that's when and so more recently like 2021 i just threw together a huge outline of like what all the whole thing would be um and then had it broken up into at the time chapters because i thought it was going to be a graphic novel and then mm. they were like this would be great as singles um and let's uh, turn it to six i had it as five originally they're like let's turn it into six give it room to breathe and six kind of makes more sense um and uh and then and then that's kind of how it all kind of really formed into what it is now okay uh i just want to talk about a couple of things you just said there uh, i don't want to go all good fellas on you but funny how uh what, funny, what be, about uh, this is funny uh, it would be, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so antagonistic yeah yeah well i mean to answer that i would say it's funny to me in an amusing way in the sense that it would be very compelling to find someone in such a like 
juxtaposed situation. I it's like darkly comic. Is what yes. very, yeah, very what? dark. And also, you to use like a seemingly innocent kind of backdrop to really dive into like some dark stuff, and then to maybe help the cuteness throw that stuff into relief into contemporary society uh, as we live it. So, like, especially with like issue three. Um, which if nobody's read it yet, don't listen right now. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, come back and then you can listen to the rest. Um, and I'm not going to spoil anything huge, but I mean, like issue three yeah. definitely gets into like a bit of a red herring angle. And then also right. into like gets really into grief and yeah. um, in a way that I thought would be it's I mean, it, it's not like cute. <laughs> There's nothing cute about right. it. No. Um, yeah. But it's an interior. It's an interior. I mean, the whole comic's about interior lives, right? Yeah. And so yeah. the issue three was kind of like grief is an interior life that we all kind of live at some point in our lives. Like you really can't avoid it. Um, and so to uh, to that was sort of the main angle, I guess, to kind of get to your funny. And again, I don't think it's funny that people are like. It's totally. It it totally uh, makes me. It compels me is what I mean when I say it's funny. Yeah. Um, well, I, it, I find can it I, really Can I just interrupt to comment mm -hmm. on what Pete was saying? I think it's funny in the same way that when you go see a horror movie and there's the jump scare, you scream and then laugh at yourself. Right. It's like that because Cathartic you have these... Kind of a exactly. Sure. You have these grisly moments of in the first issue, a duck man being cut into tiny little pieces. You have mm -hmm. a pig getting comes decapitated. Back in three as well. Yes, Better, it comes yeah. back in three. And all of these very horrific images that you flip to, but that's exactly the reaction I have personally when I'm reading it, where you flip the page and you go like, ah, oh, and then you laugh <laughs> because it's a duck man, it's a pig, and you feel something for those characters because yeah, yeah, yeah. you put a really deep internal life in them. But it's it's funny in that way. It's not like, ha, 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 I love killing people. No, 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 no. yeah, definitely. Life. Yeah, I def it, the big guiding forces for me was like, I definitely wanted to make the experience for the reader fun and cute, but also very upsetting and sad. Like, those yeah. were like, the, well, and they're, they're very much at odds. Also, like, don't forget about the ruining the childhood part, because a lot of yeah, my yeah. <laughs> childhood but, was Berstein Bears. And oh, sure. as you can see here, there's like this vibe a little bit of like, what if we did that, but then mm -hmm. also murdered them all? You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Have you yeah, ever yeah. read any of the Berenstein Bears books? Because they are. <laughs> there, there's a darkness there. There's a darkness there. But actually, that's what I want to ask about, because I need a, sort of a heat check. Like reading this book has made me realize that the busy world of Richard Scarry, there's a weird undertone in that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Am, am I the only? I didn't okay, make correct. up. If you look at the cover for issue two, the, the butcher shop is a total lift from Richard Scarry's Busy Town. There's a butcher shop in Busy Town that a pig works at. Yeah, and you're, like, <laughs> That's and you're like, this is awesome. Why did is nobody like talking about like how messed up this is? <laughs> they, they, in fact, they should be butchering humans in the busy world of Richard. It Scary. would make That's way more make, sense. Exactly, CP. Yeah. You're the you're the fucked up one. Uh, but <laughs> but I also want to say like the like what you're saying about interiority. Like, I feel like the slice of life stuff juxtaposed with the murder is that like I've been the. Richard's scariness of it all drew drew us all in originally, but that's the part that I'm like desperate for when I'm like, oh my God, it's coming out this week. I can't wait to get inside <laughs> these lives that you create here. And it's legit. It's an addicting tone that you're striking here. And well, is it that. emotional depth you're going for? Is that... It, tell me why I'm so intense about this. I, yeah, I, I mean, like, I'm just writing the comic that I want to read. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I guess that that is the, I mean, that is, I very much want to, you know, put in those, those real life moments that are sort of universal um, and that everyone can relate to. And that helps ground it all. Um, and, and it's, it's, I mean, it's really interesting because there's so much world building you know, that's required because it's this anthropomorphic town or reality that this is all set. in. so it's kind of like, it, it's very interesting to me 
I think because of that, you constantly have this moment of like, as a reader, even if you're not uh, actively doing it, you're kind of like, oh, they have a religion. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. they, you know, or like, <laughs> oh, they have a Jesus figure. Like, what is that? Um, <laughs> or, you know, it's like, oh, they have rock and roll or like, oh, they have combustion engines or like, oh, they, you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. and so which animal made that stuff up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're and like and it's basically set in the 80s. To make it all even more, <laughs> you know, bizarre and esoteric, but like the um, the the those elements in it that are that feel sort of you know, kind of plucked from everyday life or uh, to me really necessary in in breathing life into all this stuff. Um, and, and just one last one last thing on like why I love it so much, just to only praise you, but like I think there's <laughs> something about especially with I loved Richard Scarry when I was a kid. And this feels like there's a growing up aspect and how the world is actually much darker than you think it is when you're a kid. And so there's something about the way that you keep the very normalness of life here, of small town life even, mm -hmm. and then add on to it like everyone has a terrifying <laughs> secret that feels like an innocence lost story as well. And that's yeah. really, really hitting me. Yeah, I mean, I feel the one thing that's kind of interesting to sort of... Uh you know, piggyback onto that is that there's, I feel like a lot of this has resonated with folks because of that tapping yeah. into that sort of nostalgia of that innocence. And, um, and I think it's, I mean, it's really served this book well in regards to, you know, having an impact with readers, having the impact I was aiming for with readers. Like, I don't know if I played this all straight with just people, there would be such a, you know, oh yeah response. there's no way yeah. yeah right and so i feel like that's i mean that's another reason why i did that also uh the other element to it which we haven't really talked about yet but the like that there's animal animals which you kind of talked about because of the butcher shop but i mean like there's sort of people animals and then there's animal animals right yeah um mm -hmm. and uh and again i did take that from the richard scary sort of world that he built with busy town because it's like there's people walking their dogs and then there is the butcher shop and stuff like and that it is and so i was like well let's run with that and then have you know an issue one the only only people that seem to or the only sort of creatures that seem to know about what samantha's up to is literally like the animal animals yeah uh, and the, the bears and the foxes um and it felt like such a uh a really ripe opportunity to kind of use that. And that shows up again, uh, not to spoil too much stuff, but the, to use that element as a way to also get at the more human stuff to sort of start kind of have the reader think a little more about, you know, what is this, what is this meat that I'm eating? Um, <laughs> what is the, you know what I mean? Like, what what is murder if you have like bears murder and other animals every day anyway you know what i mean like it, it, mm. but i mean it you know and not to say that like murder's no big deal obviously it's horrible <laughs> but the but but the, the idea right. well, i like, like where you're going okay <laughs> okay <laughs> but i mean like it's i i guess the other thing too is that like none of this is settled right yeah. and i kind of hate having stuff like that settled and i'm really interested in writing stories where moments like that will just be things the reader takes with them for a long time uh mm -hmm. and to sort of chew on um and uh yeah that's kind of my goal with a lot of well that. i i gotta say i mean this uh, this comic sticks with you man it's I, you can't that's what i appreciate to hear yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean and to jump in a little bit about what justin's saying like the feeling you get before you open this is just such this kind of like what am I going to get excited, scared, nervous yeah. for these characters? It's uh, no, it's quite that. an uh, awesome kind of addicting emotional roller coaster that you kind of keep wanting to show up for, you know? Oh, I and really it, appreciate hearing that. Thank you. And Especially the, when you read it and then close it and cry. Like, yeah, he, yeah. He hides, <laughs> it under his, you gotta, he hides it under his bed for a while, picks <laughs> it back up. It's a whole journey. Yeah, oh, yeah. Sorry. It's a uh, lot to go through. Uh, I did want to mention, I forgot to mention this earlier, but every week on the show, we have, this is 
true. We have a professional chef down in New Orleans who either it always feels like a lie every time I say it. Does it does feel like a lie. I agree with you, and I appreciate. We, we you do a lot of bits on the show, so you got to yes. be like, "This is a uh, professional chef down in New Orleans." He just opened a restaurant called Wild South, so I don't think he is here tonight. But the restaurant is supposed to be great. Very excited for him. He either yes. creates or curates a cocktail for us every week, and he created a cocktail this week be based on your comic book. Uh, what? Called uh, under the ice, oh, where everything's nice. nice. Uh, it's tequila, aperol, ginger liqueur, lemon juice, ginger beer, and lemon rind all Ooh. mixed together. Um, oh, I didn't nice. have the ingredients, but I'm dying to make this one. Oh, this is oh, good. Is. Dying. Delightful. Great spring cocktail, right there. Yes. This uh, is yeah. incredible. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I'll send <laughs> it on to you. I'll Jats- send it on to you. Shouts to Stray Bullet. Great name for this guy. Stray Bullies. Under the ice where everything's nice. I love it. Uh, There you go. I did want to, more to the point of the book, though, bring up two specific things, if you don't mind, and just have you kind of like talk us through them a little bit. Uh, I'm loading them up now, so I'm vamping a little bit, but they're the covers specifically. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to talk about the cover for issue number one. Oh, my God. This fucking cover. Uh, I would credit, and uh, the book is great, but I think I would credit at least a little bit of the success to the striking image that we have here on the first cover. And for anybody listening who hasn't seen it, it's this forest glen, and in the clearing we have our main character, who is a bear, carrying a shovel, dragging a sack that's leaving a trail of blood behind it. Or any liquid, we're not sure it's blood. Could be Kool-Aid, unclear. Might be Kool-Aid. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Could Fun. be Kool-Aid Cher- Man. Cherry. Kool-Aid Man has died. The dead gotta open the book uh, and find out. <laughs> also, you got to talk about the tracks. It's not just blood. It's also the weight of the stuff that's in the bag mm-hmm. that's leaving marks on the ground. Right. Right. It's yeah, a fantastic cool. cover. And it immediately, oh, we that. obviously you. read a lot of comic books. This immediately drew my attention beyond the title. Maybe be like, not to judge my book by the cover, but I was like, I got to read this. I got to check this out. It. So what went into crafting this? I basically wanted to have something that was, you know, was intriguing as hell. Like that was the main, that was my main goal. Um, I, and it felt like having it be beneath the trees that you were kind of poking through this little clearing in the trees made sense to lean into. Um, and I definitely am, am cheating with this comic cover, right? Like it's not, she doesn't kill anything like that. There's no real moment that's exactly like that, but it's kind of like that. Um, but it just felt like it was the way to go with it. Um, of my pitches that I, I threw together like three sketches for this and this was the winner. The only question was like whether or not I was okay with it being not showing her face. Mm, yeah. And, um, and ultimately we were like, yes, that's okay. <laughs> like that will be all right. Uh-huh. It's, it kind of lends itself to still being intriguing and you, you get the idea that it's a bear. Um, we just wanted to make sure you could see the snout poking up there. Um, and so that, I mean, that was about it. It's funny though. I drew this cover like all the way I did all the inks and everything's inked. And then I paint in in gouache basically, usually really thinned out like a watercolor type. And that I was like halfway through painting this one and scrapped it. And, um, and then, uh, it just wasn't coming out right. I realized kind of how I messed it up. So I basically like redid the whole thing in like half the time <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> because it's usually, I don't know if you've ever had this anytime you do anything and it's taking you like forever, you're just like fighting it. And then finally, like, you're like, this is, I see wh- how I could do this better if I just stopped and did it again. Uh, and then it's exactly what it was. Um, hmm. And so, yeah, so I put this together in like half the time it took me to do the first attempt and, uh, and here it is. Uh, And then the other one I wanted to ask you about is not the cover for this week's issue, but the next month's issue. Um, This calls back to an event that happens in the first issue, so it's a little bit of a spoiler if anybody hasn't checked it out. Um, But here we go. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. So, again, to describe it. Yes, issue five. To talk about it for the podcast listening audience, we have our duck who is bisected i guess cut into pieces like a vivisection vivisection Vivisection. yeah Yeah. and the first issue you're seeing part of his head missing part of his stomach area missing there's cuts all over his body this is a pretty extreme cover what were the discussions like surrounding this or idw was idw like 
Sounds good. Go to go you know to what it. I have the original. <laughs> the original of this is like there's way. So essentially, it's like the it's it's Danny Brewer, the, the missing college student from issue one, um, and it's his segmented body kind of reassembled, missing a couple chunks, and all the lines were made from her sort of like handheld rotary saw, and so the. Uh, the actual like sawing lines had blood spray up all of them mm. um and all and they were like can you take that out <laughs> like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey man cool it a little yeah. so yeah yeah yeah. so that's that's so that's what happened um everything else was pretty much like i i mean i obviously like i had several ideas i pitched all three and uh and then they were like oh this one's pretty cool go with this one and so i did it but it was like they were like it's like pretty bloody like can you <laughs> can you di- dial it down a little bit and well, so and I, uh, I did some it's... i did some photoshop magic on it and made that disappear well and you're getting towards the end of the series so at this point if people don't know what it is you know yeah. like this yeah. pretty clearly yeah, conveys they know now threat. There we go. Uh, we got a couple of questions from YouTube here. This is from Sean Irwin. Can you Sean, ask Patrick, I know Sean. What's up? <laughs> oh, the cool. publishing schedule for the last half is pretty aggressive. Are those dates still expe- expected for publishing three through six? I guess three is already out. Four is oh, yeah, out four, tomorrow. Oh, yeah, four through six. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, as far as I know, uh, they should be pretty nice. good. I'm finishing up six right now, uh, and then four comes out today or tomorrow, so we should be good shape. Awesome. Mm-hmm. And he has a follow-up here. says, also, I saw there's some merch at MegaCon. Will there be more shirts or other merch coming? There's definitely going to be more merch coming. Um, I don't know exactly what it's going to be yet, but uh, but it's going to be um, a, more than what was put out at MegaCon for sure. You like know, it'll a, be a bloody sack plushie. It'll be no. basically a bloody sack with bring your gloves and your drop cloths. I was hoping for like a, a you know mystery cans of paint where like certain ones have body parts in it, but other are just paint. <laughs> not gonna say that might not show up at like Wondercon <laughs> or something. There you go. Uh, and this is just more of a comment from Easy Reader. I was sad yeah. the old goat died. Listen, I would. I'll tell you guys what. Every time I'm killing one of these animals, I feel miserable because yeah. I'm just like, oh, like, even an issue two. Good, you should. I know a lot of people, you know, issue two, uh, we had Cherry Glazer, who was sort of like the town bully in a way. Um, and yeah. um, and it's still, even still, I was just like this. No, I mean, no, even Cherry didn't deserve that. Like, that was rough. That's and not- I felt like, um, I feel like I'm on a, if I feel bad about it, then I think it's I'm on the right track. Mm. And so so I appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, like I gave like the Alzheimer's goat like a horrible murder uh, at yeah. the end of one. And it was just like that. I can't. And I really wanted to have those moments of like the whole town is basically collectively like understood that they need to help out Martin as he goes around just forgetfully getting through the day. Um, and it just felt like a horrible way, just like to yeah. really, really have the impact. But then you have like the outpouring in issue three where you see his funeral. Yeah. And I yeah. feel like, and again, I don't know if I've really seen anything in a comic where it wasn't like a main character funeral or anything, you know, mm-hmm. or like a big, like supporting character, funeral. like it's totally side character funeral. But you see, like, the whole town and characters you've seen throughout yeah. coming out and being emotional about it. And it felt like that was the type of weight that this thing needed. I love that at the start of this interview, uh, Patrick, you and Pete felt like enemies. But at the end of the day, <laughs> Pete, he feels just as bad as you do yeah. when these well, characters uh, I feel uh, horrible hey, doing all this stuff. See? Yeah. You're the same. And Alex and I are the sociopaths. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Big reveal. Big uh, reveal. Uh, twist. Uh, we're the killers. We uh, we're for dinner. Uh, <laughs> this is from uh, David Quigley. Would like to know were you inspired by Animal Farm at all? I was not, um, mm. but that is a fair question. Um, but I mean, the the good news is that Tom King's got your Animal Farm goodies uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. all set all set up for you. Coming at you. Uh, I do want to mention without getting into these spoilers, we have read tomorrow's issue and oh my God, it's so good. Um, 
whatever you feel comfortable teasing, we had a reveal at the end of the last issue of maybe who the killer in the town is. Mm -hmm. We start to delve into that a little bit more in this issue. What do you want to tease, if anything? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's I very much feel like by issue four, like the lid kind of blows off. Um, right. And we're we're sort of left <laughs> seeing like how this is going to be a big problem, <laughs> right? Um, oh yeah. But I but I mean that that's about the most I'd say about it. Um, it's a uh, it's definitely like I feel like we've kind of it's been a fun acceleration by issue one and issue two is like kind of getting into the next gear and three is a little like we haven't done any we're just kind of taking a little side route a little hang and yeah. then four is like what majorly ramps up again so mm-hmm. um it's yeah i'm ex- it's funny because like each issue i'm just kind of like even issue one i was like are they gonna like it or is it shit i don't know and then they're like <laughs> oh we like it we're like okay cool well like it's too too much like one or is it like getting too slashery and they're like no no no, we love two and it's like okay but three's like really sad and weird nobody's gonna like three and they're like no we like the weird we sad like more, <laughs> more grief <laughs> <laughs> so it's they all have their own flavors to it four is very much like it's probably the most of what people were probably expecting Hmm. would would end up happening i think with this comic and so that it, i'm guessing that it'll it'll be pretty well received by folks that are already into it um and then i'm like dying to know what people are going to think of like five <laughs> like yeah you gotta six, come six, back like, once it's all out there because we oh, would love, love to, to talk yeah. to you yes I, yeah. would be yeah. awesome. after, after six when you announced the second series which yeah you surely are doing oh yes uh, i sure hope can... so um, I would, I would love to be able to say that we've got more common to do a victory lap. Well, do you think, do you think there is more to do in this world or are you like, I've moved on from the busy world of Richard Scary and I want to do um, something else after this. I definitely have a bunch more that I would like to do with it. Uh, awesome. and so, and I mean, I've got like, yeah, I've, I've got ideas. So <clears throat> there, you know, I mean, it's, the response has been great. I mean, to be totally frank, like it's, you know it's incredible, like totally overwhelming. And, um, and yeah, it's just sort of at this point, I'm like just trying to get to the finish line of one. That's fair. And then, uh, and then, and then we'll see you now what's in the cards and if we can do another one. Um, uh, Cause God, that would be so great. Uh, I mean, it's just been, it's just, yeah, like I said, the response has been overwhelming and it's just very fun to have something with like, I mean, you know, it's my first book that I've written and drawn on. Um, I come from a background of making movies and like little indie horror movies that some people have seen and like a lot, but a lot of people don't know about. <laughs> so it's like to be able to have something as well. And it, it was kind of a, you know, it's a bit of a leap of faith to see like, I don't know if I'll just spend a bunch of time making a comic now. <laughs> and see, yeah. like, you know, After doing 17 <laughs> years of something completely different. Um, and so it's just been really incredible and, and, you know, very encouraging. So, so yeah, man, fingers crossed. Awesome. Great. Awesome. Great Congratulations, day. Patrick. You yeah, are thank haunting you so much. our nightmares or at least beats <laughs> for real. Yeah, we beats. appreciate it. Thank you for coming. My bloodthirst only man. grows every month. So <laughs> I bury those what? bodies. <laughs> I'm talking awesome. about my personal murder life, not necessarily the book. <laughs> yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna sleep well tonight. I appreciate yeah, hearing that, Justin. All right. Good night, Patrick. We scared him. Yeah, we scared him. All right, there we go. That was Patrick Horvath. Again, the book is called Beneath the Trees. We're doing issue it out. four. Wow. Yeah. It's scary. Really... It's, I mean, it's it's a hell of a ride, man. It's a hell of You've a ride. You've turned a quarter, Pete. I love it. Issue four is up. out tomorrow from IDW. And folks, we are going to move on with our next section, which is my favorite section, because you all make it up. It's your audience questions. <laughs> and for audience questions, all you got to do is leave a question on Facebook, YouTube, X, Twitter, or Twitch, and we will get to it. It can be about Sub literally Twitch. anything. You can ask about movies, TV, comic books, love advice, as I used to say back in the day at the stage show, uh, all of that mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, what are you guys drinking Sadly, I'm not drinking the awesome sounding uh, cocktail that uh, Brett made, but I am having yep. a Negroni, which is nice. And Lovely. Oh. There you go. Um, I'm drinking uh, Knock Knock Who's at the Door coffee. <laughs> <laughs> drinking you have coffee. a flight it's soon. Good. You got to leave soon for your yeah. flight, yeah. right? A classic red eye. Everyone I talk to is like, 
you red eye? What are you, a psychopath? I was like, I thought we all did this. It turns out nobody does. Just you. <laughs> no, just me. terrible. <laughs> Can't wait. Wait till you see me tomorrow. Doc Doc Lad Shark. That's Pete. right. Land Shark. Cool. All right. We got a qu- couple of questions already. This is from The Big. Are you guys watching the new Tony Topaz show, Wild Cards? <clears throat> Recent episode had none other than Papa, owner of Riverdale's Papa's. Is wild card really the afterlife Pops? of Riverdale? Who will show up next? Uh, so for anybody who doesn't know, there's a new show called Wild Cards that's on the CW. It stars Vanessa Morgan and some dude who I think was on for Grey's Anatomy. It's a very fun, light, frothy investigator show. She plays a con artist. He's a cop. They got to team oh, up to solve man. mysteries. How do they get oh. Tell you what, I watched... Uh, I I think I watched like the first two episodes or so, and I was like, eh, "This is very fun. This is this is exactly what you want." Yeah, it's exactly what you want out of the show. It's also to the point of Alvin Sanders, aka Pop Tate, showing up. Very much a we filmed this in Vancouver show. Well, you will see, yeah, one million people from different CW shows. Um, there was some show. Oh, I'm. It's a show that's not out yet that I. Don't know the review of Barton. Oh, yeah. But, Don't, not Flex Alex. Ooh, Alex. Yeah. No, no, no. But it was definitely like another show that every single person from Riverdale and every other show is like, oh, you shot this in Vancouver. I know what you did here. I recognize that quarry from a million episodes of The Flash and Supergirl. There you go. Have wow. you guys checked out the show yet? Fan. I am a big fan. I have fan. not. When does Cheryl come in? Uh, yeah. That's what everybody keeps asking because they yeah, filmed at Pop Tate's. They changed it into like Donna's Diner or something like that. Uh, and, and the main thing that I see online is everybody's like, bring in Madeline Patch, make her Vanessa Morgan's uh, girlfriend. Exactly. Let's just move on. Love interest that. and let's do this. <laughs> what What's it on? What's streaming? With? The CW. Oh, I've heard of that. Yes. <laughs> I was going to check out the WB, but I guess it's CW. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wow. What yep. year are you in, Pete? Uh, yes, man, Michigan J, J Frog tells you to go watch Wild Cards on the dub, CW. Dub, 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 WB. <laughs> That's <laughs> failing. Oh, my God. Uh, Schoikler says, what do you want to see plushies of? <laughs> Very oh, man. Schoikler question if there ever was one. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. There's plushies of everything, but what would you want a plushie of? If you could, I'd probably want a little uh, Zalbin that I could like poke or rip out its arms. That's a voodoo, oh, a voodoo doll. doll. Yeah. Oh, oh, uh, I got confused with plushie <laughs> yeah, and voodoo. Yeah, you, could, my... you could get one of those. Yeah? <laughs> uh, definitely. You can grab yeah. one. Tell you what, if you want to give me more aches and pains, too late, buddy. <laughs> yeah. He's got them all. I want a, a plushie of Pete's cat so I could puff the fluff at home. Hey, there you go. You can puff the fluff at home, you know? Yeah. It's like the Stan Lee game except for a cat. Whatever you do to a cat. <laughs> Whatever puff the fluff means, I want to do that. Everywhere. Was it weird when he said tiles? I thought of Guess Who. I was like, where you flip them up and stuff like that to see who's To be fair, you think of Guess Who a lot. A lot. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. This is from Monk for 2004. Thoughts What's up, on Noel? X- <laughs> Noel? Is that Noel? Yeah, uh, it's thoughts Noel. On, oh, okay. Thoughts on X-Men cartoon on Disney Plus. I will say. Well, hold on. Before you, because you've actually seen a couple episodes of the yes. new one. I've been watching the original cartoon, and it's a blast. I love it. Does it's it hold crazy. up? It does hold up. It moves really? at a pace that you just can't believe. The eleventh episode of the first season is Days of Future Past. So <laughs> oh, wow. they, they start at zero and get to Days of Future Past in ten episodes. That's fast. That's yeah. fast. And it's every character is at eleven the entire time. Their drama's so high. Wolverine's like throwing himself around the room. Like I love Gene. Cyclops is like, what's the matter with Wolverine? And I'm like, how do you not know? Every, all the men are monsters all the women the female characters are the only ones who are like why don't we just actually fight the villain and stop <laughs> screwing around it's just so melodramatic. how many times it's- does cyclops do the not joke because uh if you watch the uh, uh you know it's too it's too many for me can i can not- i jump into my thoughts because i've seen the first three episodes of x-men oh, 97 everything you just said justin continues yeah <laughs> it is that's perfect and I will say, I admitted a couple of podcasts ago, I've really only seen, like, I think the first episode of the original X-Men show. And for whatever what? reason, I was like, what? 
I just wait. Didn't you just watch. saw one episode, and you were like, "Oh, that's all I need." I walk away. I don't know what happened. I don't know how I missed it. Did you go into a coma? Back. That's insane. I, as a kid, even? Yeah, as a kid. As a kid, it was I on never... all the time. It was. So on I non-stop. don't. My point is, I don't have any nostalgia for it. Going into oh this, God. definitely the first half of the episode, I was like, "Ah, oh, this is really cheesy and old." And then halfway through the first episode. This is not a spoiler. Jubilee starts dancing in a club, and I was like, I'm all in. (laughs) (laughs) This this is great. And it perfectly, it feels to me, because I don't know the continuity of the first five seasons, it feels to me that feeling of, like, back when you were, the nostalgia I felt was for going into a comic book shop and being like, picking up a random issue of X-Men and being like, what's going on here? <laughs> who is exactly. whose dad? What's happening? Who's in love with who? But you love it anyway, because it's this insane, nonstop soap opera with cheesy, crazy action moments throughout. And I had such a blast watching the episodes. They're so good. I was honestly going into it being like, I don't know if I'm going to like this. I don't know if I feel like just doing a nostalgia play is the right way to go. They completely crushed it. I was so on board halfway through the first episode. And I will say, Pete, I know you're not going to agree, but the first episode in particular is such a good Cyclops episode. It is the coolest Cyclops has been, Uh, including comics. Who wants that? Decades. He Who wants it's a cool great. Cyclops? Nobody Second wants episode, that. Second episode, amazing Magneto episode. And I won't say anything about the third episode because that's coming out like next week. But amazing I Wolverine I love this show. I went from being like, I will begrudgingly watch this to be like, when's the next episode injected oh, wow. into my veins? Oh, cool. Oh, you are on mute, Justin. We cannot hear you right now. My I'm still carrying through to watch the original series and I'm going to get there because I want to finish it before I pick up new stuff. Justin, um, I appreciate your sundial move that you're doing like every <laughs> little bit, you know, turning. It's a, it's a nice way yeah. to keep track of time. Uh, by the way, one other I'm thing. That I, one thing I will say for anybody who's like, oh my God, I got to watch five seasons of a television show. You do not. Like you totally no. can. It's all on Disney Plus. But like I was saying, if you've ever read an X-Men comic book right in the middle, You'll, there's you'll also be confused, but they set it all up for you, and it'll be totally fine. There's also a ton of recap stuff on YouTube that you can, you know, just put like ten minutes into, and they kind of give you some uh, highlights over the the season. So it's pretty cool. Uh, we got a question here from Corey Chachere. In recent weeks, you have talked a couple of times about the comic Pete used to write. Did he also used to do art on that comic? Oh, no, definitely not. Um, I uh, teamed up with some amazing people uh, to do the art. And, um, yeah, we we tried to, uh, you know, shop around and do stuff like that. But it never went anywhere, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, um, I'm always looking for a good artist to work with. I got plenty of ideas. Sweet. Oh, you're on mute again, Justin. (laughs) There we go. Um. All right, why don't we go on to the next question while Justin figures... Oh, there you are. You're back. What were you going to say? What was your joke? I said, Pete, never mind. Pete's out there making moves. It's fun. <laughs> All right. Schreckler says, last week's skipped audience question, what superhero-themed app would you want to see that isn't a game? Ooh, I'd love to see... Uh, I mean, I wouldn't use this because I'm married, but like an X-Men dating app would be great. Like mutant dating, ebb date, maybe. Anyway, mutant no. dating just the sound of that. Is, well, I, I think don't, wouldn't you have to be a mutant to get in on that? Alex? Yeah, exactly. What's happening? It's like farmers only. You can't join. Yeah, I'm not you're... saying I would use the app. I just think that would be a good app. Like, but are you world... saying you're a mutant? Is that what you just revealed? Is no, what, what I'm saying was... is in the world of X Men, I there's got to be like an M date app, just like there's a J date app. That's all I'm saying. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> You guys are 100% not on board. I love it. No, I think that that makes total sense. Normal thing to say. Great. Yeah. Uh, Pete, what would you want to see? Truth uh, social, but for the mutant liberation front? <laughs> what wow. did you just say out loud? 
Uh, I think, uh, you know, everybody wants to see the Fuck Island, uh, you know, app. You know what I mean? Where you can just... Uh, what would that app do? What would that be? What would it do? <laughs> it's just like Love Island, but, uh, you know, the island talks to you, you know, talks you up a little bit, you know? Oh, so like a dating app, but for mutants? No, no. It's an island that you go to that talks to you and gives you confidence and then introduces you to other people <laughs> on the island. It's not an app that... The- what are you talking about? Wow. Justin, do you... Interesting that you guys gave the same answers, basically. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. This is from Frederica Rosa. Which animated show should be the next to get a revival? I will say I know there's been some idle talk about the producer of the original 1960s Spider-Man animated show. Oh, wow. I wanted to bring that back. I don't think that will happen but what would you want to see what animated show would you want to see come back next i mean batman the animated series was one of the greats so you know if they're gonna do uh the x-men i think that's also a natural progression um uh, you know there's a ton of great yeah the spawn cartoon thank you provocative ambulance uh that HBO Spawn uh, series is was awesome. Uh, yeah, I'd love to see something like that. I mean, this is a little off the beaten path, but I would say Gargoyles. Give me back. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, Gargoyles. Yeah, Easy yeah. Rider, Space Ghost, great call. Herculoids, yeah. Herculoids. Herculoids is a sneaky superhero cartoon that doesn't – it has all the elements in a great way. Uh, Nat Townsend as a follow-up says Alex did you watch Batman instead the answer is uh, yes I don't know if they were on the same time but I definitely watched there Batman wasn't a choice you could watch both there's no there was no binary there, there I no gotta Batman I gotta go either. back and look at the TV schedule and figure out why I did not watch this because yeah. I loved X-Men. Like, I love the comic books. It was There's on no all the time. Before and after school, it was always Saturdays, on. Saturdays, it was on, yes, yeah. it was on the afternoon. What were you doing? Yeah, I what's insane? You, you've said a lot of crazy things. But yeah, but crazy. dude, like, <laughs> not any watching of it? I mean, that's insane. It was so gap. all oh. over the place. All right. I'm going to look just this watch up. I'm going to find out because this repeat? is like, I legitimately feel bad that I didn't watch this at this point. You should. Also, I watched yeah, did you the get X-Men into Degrassi 97 Junior episode. Junior High? <laughs> what? something weird? Degrassi Junior High? What were you watching no. at the same time? No, I watched, it was on Fox Kids, right? Of course. Yes, it's I escapable. watched Fox Kids. Like, I watched it. Apparently you didn't. Were you You've been lying to us. Cat? You're watching Eat the Eat the Cat, of course, or something like that. <laughs> Maybe, wait, was the WB stuff on at the same time? Because I watched Tiny Toons and Animaniacs. Yeah, Animaniacs, also another one, and Tiny Toons. Let's bring those back. Water I, I down feel the like, uh, yes, of course. I feel like they existed at the same time, but maybe even on where I uh, I'll tell you what, I will network. try to remember to do this. There are definitely TV Guide archives online. I will go back to whatever that was could on you, 1992 or whatever. And could you just go back out. in time and talk to your younger self and be like, what the fuck, man? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back in time and beat the shit out of myself. Yeah, so let's I do want. it. I want in on that trip. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's go find uh, Justin, too, and mess him up. Rochester you, man right? arrested for beating up young version of his friend. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing an X Men thing. It's fine. I'm like Bishop. I'm like um, yeah. They pay me in Williams says ignoring our marriages. Who's we're all married, I guess. Who's your go to comic book sweetheart? Mm, uh oh, very. Uh oh, <laughs> danger. Uh oh. Wow, Alex uh-oh. about to be busted. Danger room. I mean, I've said mine on here, Silver Sable from yes, the, so many uh, times. Yeah. Yep. the Marvel Universe. All Black Cat, Felicia Hardy. I'm a big mm-hmm. uh I think mm-hmm. I think Peter Parker, Felicia Hardy. That's the real couple, right? Mm-hmm. Pete? Mm-hmm. Nope. Nope. Um Kitty Pride, I guess. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, the, way the way you, you said, said that, that was, was just the I, biggest indictment oh, of my God. Sorry. What the fuck, man? <laughs> Pete, and Pete, yours you? is Mephisto, I guess. <laughs> no, I mean, because I don't you're know. alone, so you're, uh, you're into Mephisto. Oh, my God. What <laughs> wow. just happened? Wow. wow. 
<laughs> That's a stretch, Alex, but I'll, I'll accept it. It is, accept it, it is a stretch, yes. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that's oh even further. God. That's what even worse happened? of a stretch, but I will say. I, I don't want to continue this. I want to move on. A tip of the hat. Uh, Pete, well, you got an answer, though. You, what, yeah, you got an answer. We, I we mean, I don't, ourselves here. Yeah, I don't know. Psylocke, I don't know. Uh, you know. Psylocke. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, uh, yeah. Wow, the sum totality of her psychic blade. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. Oh, my God. Uh, Garbage Shoot Troyes would like to know what live action show would be fun revived as an animated show. Ooh, Ooh interesting. <laughs> I don't know if this would work, but I would love to see more pushing daisies. And I think, mm. like, there's enough, like, what? <laughs> I love that's fishing. A, that's a funny. Yeah, I know. Clearly, that's a funny go around. I don't know. I just want to see more of it, and I, they probably can't do it in live action. It's already a live action cartoon, so why not? Hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to think of something in the comic book realm um, oh, as well. Interesting. I was going to say Mantis, like, the live oh. action Mantis show from uh, the mm-hmm. '90s. Was that? What about the, the Giver? First... Bring back the Giver. The uh... Mark Hamill Mug, his name is Mug Mugiver. <laughs> Mugiver. I was going to say the A Team or uh, you know something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. What a superhero! There team. you go. Great, and that is it for your audience together. questions. Woo-hoo! <laughs> All right, we're going to move on to our next section, which is trivia. And for that, we're going to turn it over to Pete LePage. All right. LePage. This is the part we give back to you, the lovely audience. It's the opportunity to win twenty-five free dollars to Midtown Comics Online. Because if you had twenty-five bucks, you want to go to a comic book shop and spend it, right? I mean, come on! All we need is a first hand up of me, a uh, hey, pick me, uh, Zelbatrons, a toolbox, you know, any of those things. And uh, ooh, we got a know. yay from Easy Reader. I don't know if I can. Easy that's... Reader. Hey, Monk's in there. Ooh, let's do no. uh, You got a lot no. of options here. Yeah. All right, you're gonna do monk. Yeah, let's do let's do it. All right, easy no, reader. Let's... We'll get you next time. But we're bringing in monk 420 2004. Yeah. <laughs> All what right. What does that here... mean? Yeah. I don't know. 2004 was cool, I guess. All right, here we go. Today's trivia is on comic book writers and artists, and a small nod to the legend. Michael Culver, R.I.P. Please listen to all three options before making your selection. Here we go. Question number one. This writer is known for Secret Six and Birds of Prey. Is it A, Gail Simone? B, did anyone hear what happened to Stuart? C, Stuart Fell. (laughs) Wow. Wow, Talk about layers. How many layers? Don't overthink this, man. Pete, you do not need to help any more than you already have. Oh, okay. okay, (laughs) There's an answer and then a sentence. Yeah, so Monk's saying what? I think he's saying A is what he's saying. You're correct. It's A. All right, here we go. I think what Monk's saying is W-H-A-T. Yeah, that's right. Question number two. This artist worked on The Sandman as well as Beast of Burden. Is it A, Jill Thompson? B, does Mountain Dew have any siblings? C, Martin Dew. <laughs> nice. By the Sandman, you mean Adam Sandler, right? Uh, no, that's funny. I thought about that when I wrote it, and uh, good call on your part there. Yeah. Way to pick up what I'm putting down. A is correct, Noel. Nice job. Here we go. Question number three. This Eagle Award winner is known for Ultimate Spider-Man, Runaways, Guardians of the Galaxy, and much, much more. Who is it? Is it A, Sarah Pacelli, B, Alan had the best first date of his life, or C, Alan Flyin? <laughs> this new structure is very fun. Oh, good. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, you're correct, Monk. It is A. A for all three of them. Yeah, I guess we're doing all A's from here on out. Yeah, it's <laughs> going to be uh, some all A action. You know what I mean? Triple A. Triple A. Hey, if your car is in trouble. What was the secret movie you're referencing, Pete? Of course, I'm talking about the 1980 monster hit, Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back? (laughs) Yeah. Nice. 
The way you said it makes it sound like you've never heard of it before. No, I have. I just have never called it Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. No, the full name of the movie is Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back Return of the Jedi. Hmm. (laughs) Wow, Monk, I want to thank the CBC and everyone for this honor. Oh, that's nice. That's very nice. I am trying to look up the TV guide from the day that X-Men appeared and i'm not finding it but i am finding found a, a tv guide from october 31st 1990 it was about the golden girls no lots of stuff going on 7 a.m pete i gotta ask you what did you choose on one channel teenage mutant ninja turtles on another channel tiny tune adventures on another channel's adventures of the gummy bears what oh bouncing into? here and there and everywhere yeah. We are the gummy, gummy bears. bears. So gummy what bears. I would do is I would start with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, of course. And then <laughs> if I had seen that too many times, mm-hmm. uh, I would bounce over, uh, you know, to bounce. the uh, Tiny Tunes. And Wait, then... this is in the morning of a weekday? Yeah. Yeah. So well, no, this I would is watch a, cartoons before I, think this I left is a for the Saturday day. morning, October 31st, 1990, ah, which is two years before... Uh, exactly. Yeah, X Men. So this is the wrong thing, but I'm curious anyway. It's interesting S- because, wow. like, s- six a.m. six a.m. You got real Ghostbusters, oh, Mighty yeah. Mouse, GI Joe, <laughs> sorry, Macbeth, uh, <laughs> Macbeth, <laughs> Macbeth. I don't know. Uh, Flintstone Kids, Mister Wizards World, Tom and Jerry, Cartoon Express, Mister Wizards World, oh, know, the that's... USA Cartoon oh. Express. That was Dude, a Hair Bear Bunch is on the Cartoon Express, bro. Come on. Yeah. yeah. And then 630, you got Mr. Mr. Rogers. Uh, you got Jetsons, Dick Tracy, Alvin and the Chipmunks, DuckTales, Popeye. Wow. It is packed, man. Wow. What a life we had. Yeah. We now didn't we're know how good up, we had it. Now we're just grown ups murdering the other people. <laughs> 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 what an innocent law. Innocence loss. Uh, what a time. Well, listen. Whoever it was, Monk, <laughs> thank you for playing. You will get yeah. $25 to Midtown Comics. Shoot us an email at comicbookclublive at gmail.com. And we'll get that off to you in the meantime. What are you guys looking forward to? Oh, man. A lot of great stuff I'm looking forward to. Uh, Nightwing number 112. Get your tissues ready, man, because it's it's a crier. Uh, yeah. Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong number six. And if you find this, I'm already dead. Number two. Wow. Interesting. Justin, what about gotta, you? Got a shout out beneath the trees where nobody sees number four, um, as we talked about, since lots of big upping of that in our world. And, you know, this is, uh, there's a lot going on in Web of Spider Man number one, and I have a lot of thoughts on it. Oh, really? Uh, I will have a lot of thoughts on it, that is, because it's this is, it's setting up the sort of future of the Spider Verse in Marvel Comics, and there's a lot of wild ideas on the table. It looks so very much looking forward to it. Well, I'm looking forward to talking about it in the stack, buddy. I'm sure yeah. you'll have a lot of great things to say about it. <laughs> hey, I'm a font. How you would never hold back. A <laughs> couple of things I'm looking forward to. Additional Once Upon a Time at the End of the World, number 13, by Jason Aaron yes. and Nick Dragota and others. Oh, yeah. This book is great every single time out. Agreed. Really curious to check out Something Epic, number 8, from Simon yeah. Kondransky. Yeah. We Howard love that duck. book. I'm very surprised it's coming back. Curious to see Agreed. what is going to happen more with that. And I just want to give a shout-out to DC Comics' Ape Roll Special. Yes! Yes, dude. Yes. Just a bunch of monkey and ape characters thrown together for an April Fool's issue. Nobody's doing Great. it like this. That's just fun. Man. It's, That's it's fun. good. They're times. having fun. They're having yeah, fun. Have it's some fun. You're making and comics. That is it for this week's show. A couple of people <laughs> want to thank. We want to thank Patrick Horvath for coming on, talking yeah. about Beneath the Trees Where Nobody Sees. Issue number four is out tomorrow from ITW. Mitchell Martinez. We're talking about wannabes that is out now yeah, from Scout Comics. As you mentioned, they're working on the fifth issue that's coming out soon. Tom Akel from Rocker Ship Entertainment. Rocket Check out Ship. Gun Punch on Gun Kickstarter. Punch. Dune Part Eleven. 2, the graphic novel on Kickstarter as well. And Back Channel, which hits stores on April 2nd. Next week, we have another pack show. 
Steve Morger is going to be here to talk about the Lake Como Comic Art Festival in Italy. Ooh. Also, we're going to have a Ooh. bunch of werewolf stuff with Dennis Robinson talking about Lycan, Solomon's Odyssey Chapter 3. And David Small is going to be here to talk about Werewolf at Dusk, his new book. Ooh. Comic Book Club News, our daily news podcast coming out every weekday. Marvel Vision, our Marvel podcast. We've got a bunch of news podcasts and presumably we're going to be covering X-Men 97. I also think. Invincible. S- Sons of a Gun, our DC podcast. Check that out. Pod Vincible, our Invincible podcast. As Pete mentioned, is back for the new half of the season. Patreon.com slash comic book club to support the show and all the shows we do. Don't forget to subscribe on Apple, Android, Spotify, or the app of your choice at Comic Book Live. On Twitter slash X, Comic Book Club Live. On Instagram and TikTok, comicbookclublive.com for this podcast and many more. Until next time, watch Girls 5 Eva Season 3 by Kimmy Gatewood on yeah, Netflix. Kimmy Good Gatewood. night. Good night. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye.